I'm going to show you how to make this trowel holster for your Dr. Grant costume. And stick around at the end, and I'll also show you all of the other uh, effects that uh, Grant keeps on his person in Jurassic Park. I've got my plans printed out, and these are available at my website, linked below. And I've also got this vegetable tanned leather here. This is about six to seven ounce, which is the weight you're going to need to make this. So I've cut out and I'm just laminated the patterns with some packing tape uh, just to keep them more durable. And I'll start by just marking the holes with an eighth inch hole punch and then just mark around the pattern uh, with a scratch all. And I'll get the front of the pouch also. I'll use a sharp utility blade to cut these out and just run them against a straight edge for the straight lines. I'll also mention that if you do want to buy one of these already made, I have completed ones uh, also available on my website. I'll switch over to a hobby knife here, which has a narrower blade, and that'll make it easier to get around this curve in one shot. I'm not trying to cut all the way through the leather, though. I can always come back and get the rest of it if I need to. I'm going to apply a coat of oil before dyeing, which I found just works pretty well with this combination of leather and dye. I'm using Neat's Foot Oil, just blended with some other uh, leather conditioning oil. I'm using an edger to give a slight bevel to the uh, edges of the leather, the sharp sides, just to round it over a little bit, make it a little more comfortable. And that's also going to help with burnishing later on. On this piece, I'm even just going to do the top side. It's thin enough that I don't really need to get the back also. Here's what I'm using for dye, this Fibing's Pro Dye in chocolate. I like this stuff a lot, and you can even uh, dilute it with a little bit of... Um, denatured alcohol and helps it go on a little smoother. I like to use these foam blocks for applying dye. A lot of people use those little round wool daubers and those tend to kind of leave streaky marks um, on the leather if you're not using it exactly right with the right dye. But I just buy big blocks of this stuff from the uh, craft store. It's meant for, I guess, stuffing pillows or, uh, you know, seat cushions, but I just cut it up into little blocks and it's great for applying dye. It usually takes two or three coats on the grain side of the leather to fully saturate it and get an even uh, layer of dye on the across the whole piece of leather. While the leather is still a little bit wet after dyeing, I'm going to use these wing dividers to mark the stitch lines and also just these uh, decorative uh, lines across the leather. And I can just use the patterns to uh, measure exactly how wide they need to be. Now this really only works on vegetable tanned leather. If you're using oil tanned or chrome tanned, 
leather, it's pretty hard to get a good uh, mark or stamp on that type of leather. I really like using saddle soap to help burnish the edges of leather. And you can just damp them up with a sponge and then apply a little bit of saddle soap and then just burnish them with a damp cloth. Um, and I'll even rub that cloth in the saddle soap a little bit just to get a little more lubrication going on. And sometimes I'll come back with the wooden uh, burnisher just to mat down the fibers a little more, but that's totally unnecessary. And especially on a prop like this, you don't need the edges to be uh, perfectly done at all. It's a good idea to apply some finish to the leather after dyeing, and I'm using Fibing's Leather Balm with Atom Wax. This is a nice wax-based finish. You just apply it with a cloth and let it soak in, and then you just come back later and buff it out. I should also mention that either before or at some point after applying the finish, you might want to feel the leather and see if it needs another coat of oil as the dyeing process does dry it out a lot. I'm paying a little bit too much attention to the edges uh, for what this is. Um, and I'm even coming back and slicking them down again just in case it, uh, the, the finishing process raised the grain on the edge a bit. and. Again, totally unnecessary. One final step I'm going to do here is just seal the edges with this acrylic resoline, and that's going to make sure that the edges remained matted down and burnished. I'm going to use an eighth inch hole punch to punch all the holes. The four in the middle are for rip stops on the belt loop and then the two on the top are for the line 24 snaps. This is a diamond stitching chisel and I'll use this to mark where my holes for stitching will be on the sides of the front piece. Before I start stitching it all together, I need to cut the slots for the belt loop. I can use a straight edge uh, to cut a light line on the leather, and then I can cut all the way through the leather just following that line without the straight edge. I find that's the best way to cut these in a nice straight line without going uh, you know, over past the, uh, the ripstop hole. I need to mark where the front part attaches to the main body of the holster. And this is just so that I can put some glue down exactly where it needs to be. It's important to use contact cement when gluing leather. And you can get contact cement like that barge cement that is specifically meant for leather. You can get acrylic leather cement. Uh, you can even just use the contact cement that you would get at the hardware store. Um, but the process for applying the cement is it goes on both sides of the leather and you need to wait for it to dry and become tacky. And once that happens, you can apply some pressure when attaching the two pieces together and that activates the glue. And I can just line them up, apply that pressure, 
and then those pieces are going to be adhered pretty strongly. I'm going to finish punching through the leather for the stitching holes with this diamond awl. Now you could just do the whole thing with the uh, diamond chisels, but I find it's a little bit easier um, for me to go back and punch through with the awl. I'll use this braided poly thread to stitch these up. I am going to apply some beeswax since this particular thread is not wax to begin with. Though a lot of hand stitching thread does come pre-waxed. Here's how to thread the needle. First one end goes through the eye of the needle and then the needle will go through the thread one time and a second time. And then I'll also do that on the other end of the thread for a second needle. The saddle stitch is the most common way to sew two pieces of leather together by hand. And it's actually a pretty simple uh, technique. You really just cross the threads over uh, through the hole and that's it. I'm doing one back stitch there to start and I'm being careful to align the thread pretty accurately but again on a prop like this it doesn't need to be a perfect saddle stitch. Opening up the hole with the needle on the right then passing the left needle through, and just like that, it's finished on one side. I will go back and do two and a half back stitches to lock everything in so that that thread has no chance of coming undone. Now that that side's done, I can snip off the excess thread and then melt it down to seal it and again, help to ensure that it won't come undone. Before I stitch up the other side, I need to install the snaps because uh, my snap setter won't be able to fit inside the holster when it's completely sewed shut. I'm using line 24 snaps here, which are the sort of larger 15 millimeter heavy duty snaps. You can get these with a snap setter that you just use with a hammer. I've got a decent hand press here, which makes setting them a little bit easier though. I'll also set the cap side of the snap uh, since I've got my tools out and things are set up to do this. Now that the snaps are set, I can go ahead and seal up the other side of the holster. Hopefully my contact cement is still active and with a little pressure I should be able to engage it. Uh, 
I also need to punch these holes all the way through. It's a little bit more difficult to stitch this side of the holster just because I can't get my stitching clamp aligned underneath of the holes. But the process is the same. Start with a back stitch and then stitch forward the rest of the way. Now on a saddle stitch, it's always important to be stitching towards you for the main part of your stitch. I've got the show side of the hole arranged to my right side. I've got the back side of the hole arranged to my left side. And with that last back stitch, that is the end of this build. All I need to do is snip off the excess thread and then burn it down to seal it off. And here's the final product. This will fit a folding trowel exactly like in the film. And the brand, I believe, the brand name is You Dig It. This one's just a generic one that looks better, I think, than the You Dig It ones available now. I'll link this and any of the tools and products uh, that I used in the description if you want to check them out. And finally, let's go over Grant's Everyday Carry Kit. So, of course, he's got the trowel in the trowel sheath. This next one's a GI first aid case. Sometimes these are listed as a compass pouch. Uh, these are just little pouches that have an Alice clip attachment on the back. We've also got the Leatherman multi-tool in the leather case. These are pretty widely available still for not too much money, either on eBay or even Amazon. And of course the gold frame aviators with the brown tinted lens. And lastly, Grant wears a World War II era field watch. These tend to be pretty pricey. This one I found it's close enough. It's got the uh, white face and the large uh, numbers. <laughs>